Ahoy, friends of the internet. It's the Alternative F1 podcast and a Marine special. I'm Matthew Connell, Andre Dixon. We're on a boat. Man, honestly, different levels to different levels to different levels. We keep on moving and raising the bar. You know, what? where, where are we going to be next? Space. I hope so. I mean, there's no better place other than space. But for now, we're here under Solent. Thanks to Honda Marine. Start life on the water of Honda Marine. With their simplified and easy one-stop shop, boat, partner, buyer journey. So from engines, the hulls, ribs, life jackets, training, you can sort it all with Honda Marine Boat Partner Dealer. If you're a complete madman to miss out on this, enter the marine world of Honda and brands it trusts to deliver quality and value turnkey packages. Packages are water ready and perfectly appointed for new boaters with everything you need and nothing you don't. Now, Dre, we, we've been very, very lucky that we've spent, well, day one of two mm-hmm. out on the boats. How have you found it? It's been quite an experience. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's, you learn so much new skills. You actually test yourself and push yourself more than you think. And it's, uh, you know, it's not easy by any, by any means, but it's, you know, so much fun, challenging. And, you know, you come away with it feeling, thinking, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I learned a, new, a lot of new things and I'm ready to take to the high seas. It's kind of difficult because it feels like that was really good. Oh, yeah. unbelievable punish! Well, <laughs> I raise you because it seems like when we planned we were planning this episode, yeah. and um, in the build-up, Honda decided to um, jump ship. I love that from Formula One. Thank you. Cheers. Big up. <laughs> and now, of course, it's the elephant in the room. And to be honest, I think a lot of our friend circles around us were like, "Oh, be careful here," because we're talking Honda, doing a Honda thing, Honda Marine. Perhaps big up, but. Of course, the news that broke out that mm. Honda had left, but look, for reasons good, yeah. but also maybe more problems really for Red Bull, if anything. Yeah, I, I, I think for, for Red Bull in particular, this is serious, serious problems here. Obviously, they can skate over it and they can pretend that it's, you know, everything's fine, but now they really do have to kiss kiss up to Renault as they were before you know obviously uh, engine providers for, for them and then literally that didn't end re- really well Did and not. I feel that I feel personally that, that um, Red Bull didn't handle things in, you know professionally the way that they should it got a bit personal a bit snippy so therefore now you know Cyril's going to be like well <laughs> we well, well 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 we're good look who's back but this is the thing, like, it's not all doom and gloom because Honda has done a lot of really, really impressive things within the world of F1 for many good reasons that we're about to find out. So here's Steph Turner and Ariana Bravo to help us out understand the fallout of Honda leaving F1. An out of the blue announcement last Friday that Honda would be leaving Formula One at the end of 2021. This took everyone by surprise and left a lot of unanswered questions. Now, Honda has been in and out of the sport for many years, but returned in 2015, supplying power units for McLaren. After a difficult few years, Honda and McLaren split, and instead, Toro Rosso switched to Honda engines for the 2018 season. The partnership showed promise, and Red Bull then followed suit. And that was the beginning of the partnership that we see today, with Honda supplying power units for both Red Bull and Alpha Tauri. Now, it appeared that there was a strong working relationship between them, and they secured five race victories in their two and a half years working together, and many felt that we may be onto something good here. But now, Honda have decided that Formula One no longer aligns with the direction that they are headed. So, why are Honda moving on? There was a hint that change may be coming in 2019, when Honda only renewed their contract with Red Bull for one year. And now, the Japanese manufacturer has made the decision to leave the sport due to a direction change towards carbon neutrality. As Honda is beginning to focus on going green with their road cars, they have recognised that this will require a shift of resources. This poses an interesting question to F1 more widely and the direction of the sport, given the growing focus on the environment. Current technology doesn't provide enough performance to support F1 racing as we know it, but something will have to change eventually if the sport is to remain popular and relevant to the times. It's also interesting to note that despite Formula One's plan to be net carbon zero by 2030, this was not enough to entice Honda to remain in the sport. Something else to consider is the future of F1 in terms of engines. Being road relevant is what draws the manufacturers in. So given the shift in priorities for manufacturers, where does this leave F1? Now, Red Bull and Alpha Tauri are on the lookout for a new engine supplier. And at present, the only options are Mercedes, Ferrari and Renault. 
Most people believe that it's unlikely Mercedes or Ferrari will be willing to supply engines. And with Renault currently supplying the least engines on the grid, the rules would require that they supply to Red Bull and Alpha Tauri. They have previously worked together with Renault supplying Red Bull between 2007 and 2018. But it's no secret that the Red Bull and Renault relationship ended badly. So a reunion may be a little awkward. I think we'd all really love to have a listen in if and when that conversation happens. It also has a knock-on effect with Max Verstappen specifically. He has his eyes on being a world champion and the youngest ever world champion at that. But this has definitely thrown a spanner in the works. He signed a contract with Red Bull tying him in until 2023 but there have been rumours flying that there may be an exit clause. Christian Horner has come out and said there is no engine related exit clause and that Max is currently very comfortable but it remains to be seen if he will still be this comfortable after Honda depart and if he does decide to look elsewhere I think there is no doubt that both Mercedes and Ferrari will be all ears. Honda has won six World Constructors Championships, five Drivers World Championships and over 70 Grand Prix as an entrant, constructor and engine supplier over various periods since 1964, ranking fifth in Formula One history. In 1965, they achieved their first victory at the Mexican Grand Prix and then later went on to win the Constructors Championship every year between 1986 and 1991 with Williams and McLaren and then the Drivers' Championship every year from 1987 to 1991 with Nelson Piquet, Ayrton Senna and Alan Prost. The 1988 season in particular saw Honda power the most dominant car in history, winning 15 out of 16 races with the McLaren MP44. Now entering into the new millennium, in 2004, BAR Honda finished second in the Constructors' Championship and by the end of 2005, Honda had bought out the BAR team, becoming the Honda team for 2006. Following a brief break from F1, they came back as an engine supplier to McLaren, later splitting, then joining up with Red Bull and Toro Rosso for the so-called new era. In the first year of partnering with Red Bull in 2019, they secured a podium finish at the Australian Grand Prix before Red Bull took their first victory in the hybrid era at the Austrian Grand Prix. They also secured wins in Germany and Brazil. Now this year we saw Max Verstappen secure a win at Silverstone and of course not forgetting the ever so magical win of Pierre Gasly at the Italian Grand Prix. With so much history and success throughout their time in the sport, it will be sad to see them go, particularly having seen them enjoy some great moments in the last few years. So huge thanks to the Driven by Diversity squad, they're giving us a lot of useful information, much wonderfully put together than we could. Now of course, this weekend it's the Nürburgring it's the well it's not the German Grand Prix it's the Eiffel Grand Prix not in Paris not in France so that is very 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 confusing mm -hmm. a lot of things to look forward to going into it um we didn't get a practice because of the weather it got rained out fogged out and we were robbed of the opportunity of seeing some of the F2 stars come through Callum Mylot, part of the Haas drive um set up there and the big the big talking point of course is Mick Schumacher coming up off Romero and of course, a big rumour to potentially partner up with Kimi next year. Now, there's good and bad, I feel, out of this. Yeah. Don't get me started about yeah. Kimi now. God, God, <laughs> God love Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah. You know, a complete experience head, former world champion. Mm -hmm. Would love to see the Schumacher name come back into the world of F1. If the lineup is that, those two. Mm. Is that great, weird, madness, what's going down? It's great in in a sense for for Schumacher because obviously he's going to be learning for, from such a you know this is like a Hall of Fame you know driver uh, from Kimi Raikkonen obviously you, you know again and again since since we started this thing I've always been saying that you know why is he in, why is he in it anymore if he's just doing it for for a hobby I do think that you know uh, these smaller teams who are not looking you know not going to win they should actually just be pushing new drivers to come through so i'm happy that we're going to get a new driver a new exciting driver with a you know come on with that weight and of the name in it amazing but you know i, I still want progression and new drivers to come through i think it's one of those things that the, the only logic i can feel and sense from it is if mick schumacher you know kimmy being a former ferrari guy mm -hmm what better driver possibly to have next to Mick to maybe get knowledge off. Maybe that's the kind of the trade, the payoff that they get out of this. Now, of course, with the, the Eiffel Grand Prix, mm -hmm. in being in Germany, of course, Lewis Hamilton has the opportunity to get his 91st Grand Prix win, equaling Lewis. Schumacher, Michael's, Michael Schumacher's record. So that's, I think that's quite fitting, yeah. being in Germany, because the last Grand Prix, 
bit of chaos. We had a Bottas win, which of course we've talked about. Dre loved. Big Bottas fan up in here. Now, of course, I'm still overwhelmed that we're on a boat. It's a bit of a madness, but unfortunately for us, um, Sam couldn't join us on this one. So here is another amazing five things that Sam is looking forward to at the Eiffel Grand Prix. Hey guys, it's time for another five things to look forward to this weekend. And it's another new Grand Prix. This weekend it's the Eiffel GP of the Nürburgring, a new circuit, but one that could throw up a couple of interesting opportunities. So talking about opportunity, there is seven potential opportunities for the current drivers on the grid, as seven of them have already raced this track before. That leaves 13 that it's completely new for. So those drivers are Raikkonen, Hamilton, Perez, Vettel, Ricardo, Grosjean and Bottas. The other 13 have never been here before. They may have taken their weekend track cars around it, but the likelihood is it's going to be an entirely new circuit like with Jello. So let's expect those seven to be pretty strong performers this weekend. But let's also expect some potential safety cars and some rookie errors from the rest of the grid. The next one is weather. F1 hasn't had a race at Nürburgring this late into the calendar for years. In fact, it was 1984 they last held a race this late. That means it's going to be cold. Currently, the weather radar is showing that temperatures on Sunday could be 9 degrees, which means tyres are going to be really hard to switch on and really hard to get up to temperature. It does mean that the overcut could be a good option for teams when they're trying to use the pits as an opportunity to get past people. That means that the person in front who's on warm tyres, who comes in last, has a better opportunity to build up a gap between the person that's just pitted as they may take up to two laps or one and a half laps to get their tyres up to speed. That could create a 20 second gap, giving them a clear pit stop that they can come out in front. So let's look out for some overcuts this weekend. So another thing or person to look out for this weekend is Lance Stroll. Last time out of Sochi, he had a great start, but after a cheeky tap at the rear from Charles Leclerc, he did spin around, hit the wall and he was out. He also is a big, big fan of the Nürburgring. So in his 2016 F3 season, the year he took the crown, he won two of the three events here. So he's pretty handy around this track and it's one that he enjoys. So let's watch out for him doing a good qualifying session and a potentially good race result. It's high downforce, which means Renault and Racing Point, who have been pretty good all rounders this year, could be in a chance for a podium. As long as Max doesn't kind of sneak up, Mercedes, Hamilton and Bottas are pretty guaranteed to be one too, let's be honest. But as long as Max doesn't sneak up, Racing Point and Renault have a good opportunity to get a podium. Sergio Perez finally has his upgraded car this weekend that Lance has been running for the past two races, so we could see a stellar result from him. And Danny Rick just wants to get Cyril a tattoo, so let's hope we can get see a podium from a midfield team this weekend. There's two Formula 2 drivers making a FP1 debut this weekend. Mick Schumacher for Alfa Romeo and Callum Eilert for Haas. Now normally that's not a big deal. We have Roy Nassani test for Williams, not great. However, this is big because Alfa Romeo and Haas, neither of them have a confirmed 2021 lineup next year. So we could see two more rookies on the grid next year if they set the timing screens alight. So if you can watch FP1, keep an eye out for it. And if you miss it, then have a look back and see what the timings look like and see if there's any rumors. There is rumour that Mick may be announced as an Alfa Romeo driver this weekend at some point, but it's not confirmed, so definitely keep an eye on the news. Big up Sam Wilson for that awesome segment once again, always delivering the goods, bringing the, the super nerd, which we, you know, we could never match up to. He's got the knowledge way better than any of us, hence why they sent the two idiots to be sat on boats and just <laughs> do all kinds of all kinds of madness. So big up to you, Sam. Thank you so much, buddy, and we will see you soon. But Dre, so it seems very fitting that Lewis should get it done mm-hmm. in Germany. Thoughts on this achievement, thoughts on what it means for Formula One as a whole, it's huge. I mean, it, it's it's a it's a time really, obviously, because you know, predominantly, everyone knows that that Lewis is going to be favourite to to win. It's usually one and two Mercedes, and then obviously uh, with uh, Verstappen, you know, finishing third usually. Um, but I think it's time to actually, especially with, with the you know, longevity of his career, everything he's had to go through, and obviously everything that he stands for, and what he does for the sport outside of obviously just just winning. Is I, I think that it's, it's time to be able to start celebrating Lewis, 
you know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of doubters. A lot of people say, "Oh, well, he's only winning because he's got the fastest car." Well, you know what? To be honest with you, in that circumstance, that that's, there's more pressure on you to win every single race, to be in front every single lap. So for me, I I think that it, with this season in particular, it's just time to be, you know, celebrate greatness. It is definitely time to celebrate greatness, and I think, you know, we are. I feel like we're on a beckon of greatness because I feel like soon enough it's going to be max verstappen's time whether it's within the confines of red bull as of course coming back onto the, the honda story well, sorry you honda <laughs> you've done great things don't worry this is not uh, an no, outage they've, they've is, been amazing i mean at the end of the day look honda uh, are moving on from f1 for very valid reasons of course moving into um, a more greener way of the world um throws up a lot of interesting things around max verstappen mm. What would you? What could you do? What would Christian Horner do in that situation? Well, say goodbye because I I think that that is is happening. And, you know, he's already started it by you know unfollowing Red Bull Moody. on socials and things like that. You don't need to do that stuff if you're if you're feeling part of the team. There's complete unnecessary move. So I think that you know just start preparing for life after Max because at the end of the day is that I think he's out for himself. You know, rightfully so. I, I think he, you know I can see him wearing red pretty soon. There you go. Uh, it just it's just looking that way. So you know, with the unfollowing, that's a message. Whether they want to, un- you know, uh, underplay it or not, <laughs> it's, it's literally gonna happen. I think it's just one of those things. I got a lot of love for Max as a driver, for but Max being the petty um, teenage girl on um, social media. Yeah. You know, not, hashtag not sorry. Um, you know, <laughs> well, who who does that? You know, I, I, it adds to the drama. Yeah. It's ex- I mean, for me, it's exciting sitting back. You know, with with you know, being the McLaren fan up in here, I'm just like, cool. You know, you do your thing. They, they have a fun lineup for Waiting next for year. Waiting for the downfall. Yeah, wait, you know, in, it's, it's time for <laughs> the Brits to, to come back up in this. But nevertheless, you know, we've we've got a lot to look forward to now as we kind of wrap up our segment up in here on the Marine, the Marina, up in up in his water set up in the Solent. I mean, we're actually on a boat. It's a bit of a weird, weird setup. If you are not watching this on YouTube and you're listening to us on Spotify, iTunes, Google, Deezer, all that good stuff, just press pause or go back to the start. Go to YouTube. Go to the back to start of the episode. Give it a watch. Give it a listen because it's we are actually sat on a boat. And I every, again, I keep on just taking in the surroundings. Yeah. Making Dre, what what's going on? It's random. But before we kind of bring it to an end. Um, Without us actually being able to see any practice laps or anything, mm. predictions, predictions, outcomes. Is it just going to be Lewis and Lewis, Lewis, Lewis? You know what? I've got a feeling that that there's there's something going on with with Bottas. I, I feel that you know, obviously, I know the, the history between his, his uh, you know, under his outburst the last time yeah. uh, over the team radio. But I just feel that there's something on uh, about him. I think he's under serious pressure. So I'm going to go with this week. It's going to be Lewis. I think Verstappen's going to finish second, and I think that Bottas will finish third because I think I, like I think there's, there's a bit of pressure coming to him, and he's reacting to it hmm. not as well as he should do. Well, I think it's always too obvious to go for the, the Max Verstappen, Lu, you know, Max Valtteri. No, sorry, Lewis mm-hmm. Max Valtteri or switch Max and Valtteri Bottas yeah. around. So I'm just going to throw it out there and do something really out there and random. Sure, Lewis. He can have his first place. Second place, Carlos signs. Why not? And third place, hmm, Charles Leclerc. Why not? We don't know. Who, who knows anymore? Well, Honda's, I... Honda's left us. We don't know. <laughs> no, nothing's going to happen, but Honda isn't going to leave us in the water. That's for sure. So on big that note, Honda. big up Honda. We've got more boat adventures coming up. Honda Marine making a lot of amazing boat dreams happen. So check them out. Get a load of that. Dre, I guess we can um, sail off into the sunset. We sail off the sunset. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I know. I'm, I've ran out of boat puns. So that's, that's, that's about as good as it gets. People uh, sick of us now. Oh, boy. They're sick of, sick of us. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, make sure you guys also uh, check out um, F1 Tracks on um, on vergemagazine.co.uk. Yeah. And obviously, we've got loads of written content as well as us. Yeah. Amazing guys talking and amazing women yeah uh, big up talking. to the crew I just say yeah, big up to the squad the, like we're yeah. not going to be those people that pretend like it's just our magic but like behind the cameras and our friends and family and friends at the Honda and urban urban truant yeah. she, teaching us up in here um, big bunch of legends you know I mean it's flipping freezing there but it sort of sorts of out with this uh, soft shell yeah. goodness looking fresh so we are going to ride out of here 
Alt F1. Head over to Verge magazine to see Dre and I's magical adventures out at sea. It's going to be something, well, I don't know. I hope it's cool. I hope people learn from it. It might just be a load of nonsense, a bunch of, you know, morons and boats. One guy can't drive, another guy's scared of water. So, well, yeah, my, ma my mask covers a lot of the fear that I had, but, you know, we learned a lot of things. Amazing instructor, you know, um, and obviously always thankful to Honda for their support. And, um, you know, we... We'll see you at Monaco, I guess. So yeah. You get, get on the boats there. We got, yeah, that's that's next. We're going to be on super yachts, you know, coasting around. You know, that's 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 Hanging of Roman Abramovich. We, that could be the way. don't know how we started know. here. Exactly. <laughs> we'll tune in. We shall find out where we end up next. What random, I guess, place we're going to do these podcasts from next. If not, it's probably going to be a Zoom call. But until then, thank you for watching the Alternative F1 podcast. I'm Matt Andre, and we shall see you all soon. Thank you.